Not all core exercises are created equal. And if you have a chronic low back pain history, maybe it's a herniation, a bulge, L4, L5, or L5S1, and you're trying to do core training, you're trying to build strength in your core, some stability around your low back, well, you gotta pick the right exercise. And today I wanna share with you two of my favorite pre-workout core exercises that I use inside of my warm-up. Now, last week we talked about the WCSP method. That is how you structure your back pain friendly workout. Well, today I wanna isolate the core training side and give you two examples of what you should use. Now, before we dive in, it's a lot to picking the right core exercises, and I put together a free guide for you to use alongside this video. You can go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash core blueprint. I'm actually gonna map out exactly the way you should be picking exercises, which ones are right and which ones are wrong. You may even try the two today, and you're like, I just don't like these for some reason. Well, this free guide is gonna help you actually establish a good set of exercises for you to pick for your specific back issue. Just go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash core blueprint it's yours free now when picking the right core exercise for your pre-workout warm-up kind of time where you're working on the core strengthening core stiffening i'm pretty picky with the exercises that i do i don't try to do anything too advanced very simple more focusing on stabilizing maybe walking and carrying some weight um, or something that will just kind of help activate the muscles in my hips and low back basically the entire 360 core area um, there's a lot of exercises you can pick from but the first exercise that i really enjoy doing lots of different variations of this exercise can be done for someone who does have a chronic back pain situation and that is the farmer's carry now what you're going to see me demonstrate here is a simple one-arm farmer's carry now, a few things to mention when doing the farmer's carry. If you're gonna do the single arm variation of it, don't go too crazy heavy, but you also don't want to go too crazy light. Your body is capable of carrying more than five pounds in one arm, so don't be afraid to load the body. What you wanna do is just listen to your body and how it is responding. So if you grab 45 pound kettlebell or dumbbell, what you're gonna do, you'll have it on one side for the first set of this exercise. You're going to stack your body nicely so you've got your shoulder blades pulled back and down. You've got your ribs stacked and pulled down, your abs are braced. Quick breath out will kind of create some stability in that trunk and you're simply going to walk. Sometimes what I like to do is on the opposite arm that is not holding any kind of weight. I have my elbow bent at 90 degrees. I'm creating some stiffness just through basic muscle contraction. And while I am bracing on the opposite side, I'm holding the weight on the opposite side of that braced arm, and I'm simply going to walk. Now for time, you can do this for 45 seconds, you can do it for 60 seconds, or you can do it for less than that. What you're trying to kind of pay mind to is how your body is responding. What you don't wanna do is do any kind of carrying exercising through pain, right? If you're doing it for 35 seconds and you're like, I'm gonna go for a minute and at 45 seconds or 50 seconds, your pain picks up and you're like, well, I'm gonna push harder. I wanna make sure I can get this minute done. And now you're pushing through any kind of symptoms, hoping that the no pain, no gain theory plays true in this situation when it actually won't. So listen to your body, pick a weight that is challenging, but not too light. Make sure your body is stacked and be patient with how much you progress and how quickly you're trying to push the weight or push the distance with this exercise. Now, my second favorite exercise to do in my pre-workout warm-up is the side plank hip raise. There's really two variations you can do with this. What you're gonna do first is you're gonna focus on just simply the plank part where you're gonna be lifting up, your hips are gonna come forward, and you'll be in this on your knee side plank position. Now, from there, you can do this a few different ways. One, you can keep your feet stacked on top of each other, and as you come up into the side plank, you're going to almost do one of those clam exercises where your knee is going to flare out or your hip is going to externally rotate, and you're gonna be pushing up into the plank with your knee opening up, and then you're gonna come back down into a resting position while bringing your knee back and resting it on top of the opposite knee. This is the simplest version of this, no bands, no weight. You're just going to repeat this into a plank, knee comes out, come back down, go back into the resting position for 10 or 15 reps, however many you want to do. 
Now, if you wanna make this more difficult, in this side plank on your knee version, is just add some kind of booty band or whatever kind of resistance bands you have. Place it around the upper part of your knee. You're just going to add some resistance so when you go to up into the plank position and then you start to open up that knee, you're externally rotating your hip. That's going to add some resistance and really activate the glute muscles even more. Now, if you wanna level this up, make it a little bit more difficult, you can go into a full side plank position. So now you're actually resting on your forearms. You've got your feet stacked in this specific version of this exercise. And what you're gonna do is without going in and out of that side plank, you're actually gonna hold the side plank for one variation and you're going to raise that top leg up. So what you're trying to do is just create a stable place from the elbow all the way to the bottom leg that's supporting you. And you're going to bring the opposite leg up, creating a V at the lower body. You can hold this position for a little bit of time. You can do reps of this where your leg's coming back down. You're gonna rest for a second while in that plank and you're going to lift that leg back up. You can even add bands to this exercise as well. You're going to have the band closer to your knee. It's going to make it a little bit more easier versus if you have the band all the way at your ankles, it's probably gonna be almost impossible for you to do depending on your fitness level. So bring that lighter band up towards your thighs more and that'll add enough resistance to really activate those glutes. This version where you're fully stretched out is the more difficult version. So make sure you are modifying it to fit your needs. The goal with these exercises is not to break an intense sweat or to start shaking or to like really feel a burn anywhere. What we're trying to do is activate these muscles, build stability, build endurance in these stable positions for you specifically before you actually start doing any kind of weight training. Now, as a bonus, I wanna kind of point out some big mistakes I see people making. If you have any kind of low back issues and you're trying to use core exercises as a relief strategy, the first big mistake is I see people just going too intense too quickly. We are so focused on looking at exercise from an exercise perspective, where we're trying to feel the burn, we're trying to break a sweat, we're trying to be sore, after we do this. So we push too hard for our pain system at the given time. So if you don't know how to regulate that, if you don't know how intense your exercise should be, seek counsel, get help with your intensity because you can do too much and create a loop of pain which just keeps you stuck where you're at right now. The second big mistake I see people making are the transitions. So when you're going from being on the floor up into a held position, whether it be the side plank or you're transitioning from the farmer's carry, whatever exercise that you're choosing to do, the transitions, whether you're going down and then coming back up or you're going up and coming back down, these transitions where you're going from one movement direction, stopping or pausing, going to a different movement direction or grabbing and putting the weight down, these transitions are critical for being just cautious, go slow, be mindful of what you're doing. I often see people getting too reckless, too quick. They're not really slowing their reps down, focusing on controlling the movements, activating these muscles, and they just kind of blow through these different transitions of the specific exercise that you're doing, which creates irritation. The slower you go, the more focused you are, the more control you have over your body and the muscles that you're using, the better the results will be. Third biggest mistake is simply just doing too much core training in general, okay? We don't need a ton of core exercises to get the benefit of what you're trying to get out of it. Just because you're doing a bunch of core exercises does not mean your back is going to stop hurting or that a stronger core means you have less back pain. What this is about is structuring your workout in a way where you're building support, building stability around the body or around the lower back so that you can have a safe, workout. Now, if you are in pain, you're struggling to navigate what is causing your pain, you're trying to exercise, you're changing the orders around, you're doing safe core exercises, but your pain always comes back, right? You're always having to stretch it away, take medication, go see a chiropractor. You've done PT, you've done injections, acupuncture, you've done everything. You may need more of a desensitizing pain relief approach before you start approaching it from a strength perspective. This is where 99% of the students that I work with inside of my strength and pain relief accelerator program are at. What you need is more of a structured process to go through to bring relief 
to your body and your pain system before you start stacking on more exercise. Now, if that is you, you do feel hopeless, you feel like you're just treating your symptoms with random modalities that you've collected over the years and you're done treating symptoms. You wanna get to the root issue, you wanna solve the pain and get back to a normal operating life full of fun and joy and all the things that you wanna do. Let's have a conversation around your unique situation to see if what I do inside of my strength and pain relief accelerator program would be a good fit for you. I can't help everybody. I don't work with everybody, but a simple conversation will allow me to understand you, the context around your unique situation to determine whether what I do can actually help you or not. Grab a time for us to chat. You can go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash apply and you can fill out the application for us to have that conversation to see if what I do can actually help you. Thanks for watching guys. God bless and I'll see you on the next episode.